I'm no animator, so I'm not gonna say I understand everything when it comes to projection sorcery that was kind of dived into a little bit deeper in this chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen. However, from my very limited understanding and reread of the chapter multiple times to get a full grasp of just everything that was going on, I have to say it's easily one of the most creative and unique abilities throughout the entirety of Jujutsu Kaisen, and maybe in the current ongoing manga and weekly Shonen Jump. It is really creative. Like, let me just explain how creative it is. When Naoya puts his palm on someone, he literally turns one second into a 24 frame, like, I guess animation, or 24 frame rule. So he's theoretically creating a GIF slash anime scene. That's what he is doing. So just pictures in your head. When it comes to animating, you know, anime, anime actually is normally around 24 frames per second to have individual frames. And that is absolutely insane. Like for instance, imagine that, like for an anime, okay? 24 frames per second, that's usually what an anime runs on. Naya's ability is the equivalent of that. He literally turns his technique into an anime like when he puts his palm on so when he turns the entire fight into an anime and if you've watched enough action anime let's say Jujutsu Kaisen good example you'll know how the frames how it starts to get like sl it's slow at first and then it slowly picks up speed when you see the characters really starting to move and all that and you see crazy action scenes it's something that's in countless different anime and anime actually follows the very similar thing of Naoya's technique it is 24 frames per second so I, like I said, it's a very creative technique, and I feel like anyone that is probably an animator and has maybe even worked on anime would be able to fully understand everything about this technique that kind of makes it ridiculous, but just with my limited understanding, it is absolutely insane, because I just want to talk about the repercussions and some of the things that can happen if you don't follow the rules of Nalia's technique. Example, you had Maki herself found out within the chapter that if she doesn't follow the normal movements of the technique, once the palm is placed on her and the technique is activated, projection sorcery, and she does not calculate her movements properly to have 24 movements in a second, basically she will freeze for one second. So her entire body will turn into kind of like an animation frame, which you even see within the chapter. So that one second could cost her her life. We know how important one second can be within Jujutsu Kaisen. It's a very critical, like, you know, time. It's uh, one second could cost you your life. And if this man is really moving that quickly and he's getting, like, his momentum going using, you know, 24 frames per second, basically he's going to get faster and faster, continue ramping up the speed and all that, and it, one hit is just lights out for you. You'll go flying through mountains, etc., kind of like what we see in anime and what we even saw within this chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen. So there is a lot that, you know, is strong about the technique. And if you don't understand the technique, you're going to die. You'll straight up most likely die, unless you have an overwhelming technique that's able to outsmart Naoya, which has happened in the past with uh, Choso. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. So we, we know that Maki was obviously able to overcome his technique because, I mean, he was laid on the ground with his face punched in at the end, and it's a very pleasing experience, a very pleasing panel to see because the man kind of had it coming. Even if he had a great technique and all that, he had it coming after everything he said to Maki a few chapters back and just all of his other comments he said throughout, you know, what we've known from him saying for the recent time he's been in the series. So just like, I I gotta say that Maki really did some incredible stuff as well in this chapter to counter that. She figured out, thanks to her new upgrade with her body, with her new eyesight and everything, she's able to now actually see the 24 movements in you know, at one single second, what Naoya was doing, and so she was able to figure out how his technique worked to be able to counter it and do the exact same thing to be able to hit him and lay him on the ground at the end of the chapter. So, theoretically, if you can get an understanding of what his technique is, it's not really that hard to fight. It can actually be used against him. It can be straight up used against him to the point to where his own technique is reversed to, like reversed back on him. So Maki was able to figure this out, but it doesn't change the fact though. It shows just how strong Maki is with this upgrade with my sacrifice to even be able to do that. And it's like poor Naoya to a certain extent. Like I know he deserved everything coming to him in this chapter, but this man keeps fighting people like above his weight class. Like he, he was fighting people like Maki in this chapter and 
Chozo a few chapters back, you know, when, you know, he got the cursed blood in him. Just, like, he keeps challenging people that are a little bit stronger than him and he's just getting cocky and he collapses on the ground and i'm just like this man really like he loves to pick fights that he shouldn't be picking which is the thing i want to talk about now so with nalia's obvious defeat I feel like this is going to be a huge wake-up call for his character, because I feel like for the writer, the mangaka of Jujutsu Kaisen, to put just so much effort into that technique with just how crazy it is, and how it's just like, it's literally symbolic for anime itself and how it's animated, I have a feeling the character is probably going to go through some character development, maybe even a redemption arc to a certain extent, because like, when we really think about everything since the character's been introduced, and he was introduced very recently... He hasn't really done anything too unforgivable. Yes, he's made some awful comments towards, you know, Maki and been kind of sexist. Yes, it's, it's awful. But he's not killed anyone, and he hasn't necessarily done anything that you just, you can't come back from, if you get my point. So, there is a possibility for him to open his eyes up after getting smacked down so hard by Maki to realize that maybe his viewpoint on the world and everything that needs to be represented is by strength itself. Maybe he might open his eyes up that there's strength in other things besides just physical strength. I am looking forward to that. I wonder if that is what's being set up here because it just like with all the amount of information that was given to his technique, I just, I feel like it would be kind of a waste to throw the character away if he truly is gonna die here etc there's just so much potential for him to kind of maybe have a you know a good chance you know to actually help out Megami and you know be able to help out Maki maybe in the future something like that uh hopefully I'm not the only one thinking that but that's my belief maybe what is being set up here thanks to everything which let's move on to the next point Maki so Maki has from what we can clearly see, effectively wiped out the Zenin clan. I mean, we knew this was probably going to happen, but she pretty much has wiped it out. We don't really know the fate of Nalia, if he's going to be, you know, off or not. Hopefully, like I said, he isn't. But regardless, the fate of the Zenin clan's pretty much, they're gone. They're done. They're dust now. And Maki has kind of achieved what she wanted, her goal technically at this point. And so it makes you wonder... What's next for her? I mean, we know that she's carrying on the legacy of mine. I mean, we, we know this. But her dream, her once old dream is gone, and now she has this new body. What is she going to fight for now? What is she really going to be trying to fight for in terms of dream-wise? Is she just going to kind of become an empty shell and just kind of like someone that follows Megami to rebuild the Zenin clan? Or is she going to have a new purpose, something else to do? There's a lot of questions I have about her character because we know that the force that she's been fighting is pretty much the strongest, like, you know, I guess, jujitsu sorcerers that the Zenin clan has to offer. So if this really is the strongest, then her objective's done now. So what's next for the character? I am looking forward to it because her character has obviously been hyped up in the recent chapters. I mean, her unlocking her fullest potential thanks to my sacrifice and she's reached the same realm of strength as Toji himself. And we know Toji was no slouch. He was a ridiculously scary individual that was even able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like, you know, Gojo. So we, we know for a fact that she's probably in the same realm in terms of strength. She might not be the same exact level, but she is at the very least tipping near that point. And so I am looking forward to her future. What's next for her as a character and who is potentially going to be able to challenge her. So I feel like we could pretty much say that this brief little arc we've had with Maki is probably wrapping up. Maybe the next chapter is going to be the conclusion of it. But we are going to have to see. But still, just uh, outright, just ridiculous recent chapters. Like, holy crap, it is. It's been beautiful in terms of just art and animation. And uh, that's actually something I want to mention. So, you remember last week I talked about the art and animation and how there was some complaining about, you know, the manga's art for the last chapter and how it looked very rough like a sketch? Um, there was an offer comment that actually was made. He, he personally made the writer about talking about how he's never wanting to actually submit rough drafts for the final, like, 
product. For instance, when the chapter goes in to Weekly Shonen Jump's magazine. And it's clear that he probably got a lot of flack for it. A lot of people, not just, let's say, in the United States, but also all around the world. And I just, I feel incredibly sad for him. Because it's clear that something happened last week. Either deadline, sick, whatever. We just, we know there's a lot of overwork. Just seeing an offer comment like that is just incredibly sad. And... It, it sucks that the man is getting so much flack for just, like, probably running out of time and maybe being a little bit ill and overworked. It just... Yeah. But I just wanted to mention that he made a little bit of a continuation of that and just, like, people, give, give mangaka a break. They don't deserve to just, like, throw their lives away by endlessly working at their desks. They are people, too. At the end of the day, they're human. They deserve rest. I mean, look how much good work we've gotten in this chapter and previous chapters of Jujutsu Kaisen. It's like, don't you want to maintain the health of the writer for we can have this series around for a long time and maintain good quality? Just just think. Think about that. But I'm going to leave it at that. Just, uh, once again, fantastic chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen. Happy I caught up. I'm glad to get to talk about it. Cannot wait to see what's going to happen next. But I love you guys. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. If you uh, enjoyed my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And even if you don't like the video, you know what? Leave a dislike. Regardless, just, you know, I like to see interaction, see what people think, because it will always leave from rooms of improvement for myself and just to see what you guys think. But anyways, guys, be safe, stay healthy. Chibi out.